You just punched someone? No, that's my chair. It's very loud. It sounded like you punched someone. <laughs> no. I don't have the balls. Uh, okay. I'm not a fighter, as you can tell by the character that I created. But yeah. So, Ares. Yes. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the world of a uh, mystery dungeon. You're going to I, be what? you're going to be transported from uh, from your chair into a fantastic, wonderful, and dangerous world. Much more dangerous than that of a normal Pokemon world. In this world, you're gonna have to make friends. You're probably gonna make enemies. You're gonna have to learn how the world works. Because most of your knowledge of the world is not gonna be useful here. Yeah, that's fair. Sorry, I'm getting character. <laughs> That's okay. But yeah. I, I just can't help but to respond. So, Ares. Yes. What was your... Uh, what, what, what were you doing before you got transported into the Pokemon world? Uh, depends on when this would have canonically started. Like that is up to you. Because well, the time that you are going to move from the world into the Mystery Dungeon world doesn't matter. Because... Let's be completely honest, the Mystery Dungeon world probably runs entirely differently when it comes to time. That is fair. I would probably have been at my work computer taking calls and selling Dish TV. That's really sad. <laughs> That's pretty much all I do every day. It is very sad. So, should I assume that you, like, fell asleep? Uh, yeah, probably. We could say it was the end of my workday. I turned off my computer when, and was just really tired, because that has happened quite a few times after work, where I just go to bed right away. Alright. So, Aries. Yes. The last thing you remember is that you just had your normal day of working. Another boring day. Hell, everything was kind of shit that day. You know, everything sucked. You, you were just not a very happy person, right? Yeah, we could say that was the same day that I found out about my very good friend. Yeah, let's let's just, you know. Yeah. Let's not bum out the mood. Yes. Well, you see, I'm pretty sure you usually wake up in your bed when you go to bed. You know, usually you do not actually uh, wake up somewhere else than your bed, especially when you truly remember that you did actually go into your bed, correct? Yes. Yeah, you, you don't have, like, sleepwalking problems or anything like that, correct? Correct. Well, it is strange that... Uh, well, I am going to assume that you don't usually have uh, the smell of uh, dried uh, palm trees around you. Definitely not. You also really do not remember uh, your bed being so itchy. Because it does itch a little bit. Yeah, considering I normally sleep on a hybrid Serta bed, which is very nice, soft, comfortable, and, for that matter, smooth. Yeah. But yeah. You, you know, I assume you kind of do the thing that I do, you know, where you know, if you are not comfortable in bed, you like roll about a little bit, you know, try to find your... Kind of, kind of do like a mini version of what cats do, right? Yes. And, you know, as you do that, you find out that uh, it's not helping. If anything, it's a little worse. And you also have a hard time uh, dealing with, like, your limbs. And you, you cannot, like, reach with your hand for something. You know, like, it's almost like your hand is, like, let, let, let's say ten times shorter and in entirely wrong spot on your body. Uh-huh. You, know, you would probably try to reach for your phone or something. I don't know if you like have a phone next to you when you sleep. Yeah, for that particular case, I'd be reaching forward towards my desk where I normally have my wireless charger base. Yeah, uh, you don't reach anything. 
I just touch um, dirt, I'm guessing. No, you don't touch anything. Just air. Oh. Oh. Odd. I would continue padding around for a second to try to keep feeling for it, thinking that I'm just missing the desk. So, at this point, you would kind of realize that um, I am going to just assume that your bed is not around. Yeah. Yeah, see, Isn't as you are kind of, like, reaching, you kind of start feeling, you know, like, the borders of your bed, and it's kind of weirdly round, and again, leaves. What's going on? That would definitely get my attention, and my eyes would spring open, and I'd look around. So, you look around, correct? Yes. As you look around, uh... You realize that uh, you are inside a building that you do not recognize. Looking around, the building consists of a single, very spacey room with a table, two windows on opposite sides, a door across from you, and it seems to be made out of mostly wood. When you look up, the ceiling is part wood and part uh, palm trees cured with some kind of silky substance. Your nose is being hit by a combined smell of, well, wet wood and, well, already mentioned old palm, uh, palm leaves. Where? How? Why does this look familiar? Oh, am I where I think I am? I would then proceed to look down at my air quotes hands. Well, uh, you definitely do not have those. You actually have four tiny legs. Oh boy. And one of these legs has, uh, uh, has a strange bracelet wrapped around it. Well, my heart would definitely begin racing with excitement at this point, because in my head, all I would be thinking is, oh my god, it it, it actually happened, it's real. <laughs> what god. the hell? So yeah, what do? Oh. Well, first... I would take another quick look around the house. I'd probably pad around a little bit, try to get used to my legs. Weirdly enough, you don't actually have too much of an issue with your legs. It's almost like you know how to use them inherently. Though it is still a little strange. Hmm. <laughs> Aries, did you just, did you just uh, stream bomb me? Maybe. God damn it, Aries. <laughs> but yeah, what do? I will... Well, knowing what I know about this brace that's on me, I certainly wouldn't want to go waving it around. Is it possible to remove? Uh, you do not see an obvious way how to remove it. Hmm. I suppose I would start by trying to just see what happens if I try to just pull it off. Uh, you cannot pull it off as it is uh, tightly fit onto your leg. Hmm. I suppose... You do see that there is a, there is a lock on it. Ah. Does it look like a key lock or like a latch lock? It seems to be a key lock. Huh. Well, I have no idea how to remove that, or how to find that key. With that then, I'd probably be looking around the room for like any clothing or something. Uh, there are no clothes, though on the table you do see an assortment of items. Oh? Yes. So you would have to get up in order to have a look, as the table 
is a little higher than where you are right now. I would get up and head over. Alright, so, you make your way to the table. It has a chair. I will hop up on the chair. You notice that the shape of the chair is strange, as it is obviously not made for humans, but for Eevees. Huh. But yes, okay. you sit down on the chair, or more like lay down on the chair, again, Eevee chair, and mm -hmm. you find several items. Among them you find uh, what appears to be a lockpicking tool, you find a wand, and you find a round object with a rainbow color on it that has the, the symbol that kind of looks like a lightning bolt on it. Huh. I'd probably just kind of pick up and look at each one and kind of see if I can try to remember what they are. Well, would you know what they are? In person? Like, without our previous conversation? No, I, I, I would not. Yeah, because remember, you joined, you, you, you got here before you even learned that this campaign is happening. Yes. I knew Megastones existed because of playing that one campaign. So I might be able to draw the conclusion, but I'd probably say roll on that for that specifically. Oh, by the way, speaking of which, uh, you remember this uh, bracelet that, that you are wearing. Okay. You remember the Garchomp had it. Ah, oh, but I did never see his Megastone, so... No. But, I mean, considering I have the Amerabrace and... You do notice that one of the holes on the on the Emera Brace does look shaped kind of like that stone. I suppose in that case, I probably could draw, you know, put two and two together on that one. Yeah, I, I will let you, you know, that, you know, maybe if you put this in there, something happens. Okay. Well, I'm definitely not going to do that. Yes, let's just go ahead and use the Megastone right now. Ah, yes, immediately. I mean, the here is where it would be safe, you know. Would it, though? Because there'd be no one to wake me up. Yeah, but, like, there's also no one that would attack you as long as you don't, like, make too much noise, I guess. I guess that's fair, but I would never wake up. I would just be forever stuck in my house, which is as good as dead. I mean, how is that any... You're supposed to be roleplay. you're not supposed to be like real life Aries. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> monster. Exactly. I know, I am a monster. Monster. But yeah. So as you are, you know, sitting there and looking over the items, uh, you suddenly uh, hear the noise of... Uh, it kind of sounds like uh, something, something semi-sharp... Uh, Poking the window. And I'm guessing I only have the one window? You have two windows, actually. I have two windows. And one is right in front of you right now, because it is right above the table. And in that window, there is a bird. It I is, am going to it specifically... Is oh, go on. Upon, I was going to say, I'm just going to specifically upon, like, hearing someone tapping at the window keep my bracelet hidden under the table as I look up. Yep. Uh, there, there is a bird knocking on the window. I will lift my non-braceleted paw to wave at them. Uh, it waves and it points at the window. Uh... I will climb under the table. And, uh... Is there, like, leaves and whatnot around here, under, around my house? Uh, a little bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab one of the leaves and tie it around my Amero bracelet. Alright. Thankfully, these are palm, uh, palm leaves, so they are very, very long. Perfect. And then once I got that tied around my Amero brace, I will pop back up from under the table, offer them a smile, and poke the window to attempt to open it. 
All right. It has like a little thingy that you just like you, you move it down and you can open it. Okay. Then I will unlatch it and open it. All right. Uh, so now you can see that the, the bird actually enters through the window and stands on the table. The bird looks at you and in a feminine voice, she says, ah, hello there. Hello. Well, I'm here like uh, we have the... Uh, why do you look so strange? Why do you have your brace wrapped up? Uh, just... Uh, Did something happen? Did you hurt yourself? I'll shake my head. No, no, no. Just thinking of being cautious. Gosh, Im imagine getting yourself hurt on your first day of work. My head would tilt at that. Anyway, uh, the chief wants to talk to you. Oh, by the way, uh, in order to see what the, the bird looks like, I have the bird here. Look, there's the bird. Oh. It's look, so teeny teeny. Look at her. She's so cute. Wasn't, wasn't someone... Uh, oh, wait, that's right. Mono. Mono wanted to play a pick a pick. Yes, I was a little annoyed that Mono is picking a Pokemon that is actually already in the campaign. This is gonna be get very awkward. <laughs> I will offer them a smile and say, "Oh, uh, yeah, uh, sure, yeah. Uh, can do you mind uh, escorting me?" Oh, I mean, you've been there yesterday. Oh, I know. Just uh, uh, for fun. Hmm. All right. I mean, I don't really have anything better to do anyway. Then I'll give them a friendly smile and head out with them. Leaving uh, the... So she flies out of the window. I will attempt to hop out of the window then. Uh, when you try to hop out of the window, you immediately stop yourself as you look down and you realize that you are in the air and the fall down would most likely kill you. Oh... Well, that's not what I expected. I expected this to be on ground level. Nope. When you look around, you can actually see the kind of piece of trees. Oh. Well, then I will quickly pad over to the door and open it. Yep, you open the door, and uh, you can see that there is a ladder that goes down. A ladder? Yes, because your house is actually a tree house. Oh. How high up are we? Uh, well, for a human, it's not. It's basically on top of a tree. But for an Eevee, this is like break your legs level. Oh. Like when oh, you look I... when you look down, you have to realize you are tiny Eevee, right? And because yes. of this, when you look down, it looks like you are looking down from a skyscraper, even though it's like like two floors. Yeah. With that. I would kind of take a deep breath and start climbing down. All right. Uh, you you land. You know, you make your way down, and Picky Pick is already there, and she is looking very very confused at you. I'll just look back, confused. What's wrong? Well, more like what's wrong with you? Like yesterday, you were so chippery about everything, and today you're acting so strange. Did are you sure nothing happened? Maybe bad dreams? I, I think... I sometimes have bad dreams. I think I'm just a little bit confused this morning. Sorry. I, I'll give her a bright smile. I don't mean to put a dampener on your mood. Just feeling a little bit confused, I suppose. Ah, well, that's alright. Anyway, um, we should probably go. I will give her a nod and follow. Alright. And music. Yay, music! Oh, this is new. Alright. Aries. Yes. So, Picky Peck is uh, leading you through what appears to be a tropical forest. Not really jungle, but definitely more of a forest, right? Uh huh. Uh, you can see all kinds of Pokemon uh, as we are going, usually bug types. Uh, in the corner of your eye, you're pretty sure that you are noticed. So, have you ever played Sun and Moon? 
No. Oh. All right. So you see, uh, you see Pokemon that look very similar to what you have seen probably in your childhood, but they look different. You know, they have different coloration. You're pretty sure you have just seen a Vulpix that is white. Ah. Which is very strange. And even the bird that, the, you know, that, that is escorting you, well, you've never seen this before. I'm guessing it doesn't look like any normal pick a -peck. No, 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 it, it looks like uh, pick a -peck is from Sun and Moon, you see. Oh, okay. So I'm just assuming you don't know those. Well, I did know about the uh, the white Vulpix, because those are oh. actually in uh, Pokemon Arceus. Oh, are they? But that's Hishuan, not Alolan. That's weird. Yeah, they're, the white Vulpix are in the snow region. But why? That's wrong region for them. I have no idea. There's probably some weird lore for it. Like, is it that said in the past? I didn't yes, play Arceus, so I don't know. They're in the past. Yeah, so maybe those, uh, maybe those, uh, maybe Alola and Hishui were, like, one place. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe they moved? You know, maybe they, I don't know. Anyway. It sounds to me like, uh, Arceus is set pretty much in what was essentially Pangea for us back, well, not for us, we weren't, humans didn't exist at that time, but for Earth, when it was all one continent. Yeah. That's what I'm guessing. Okay, that would make sense, I guess. Again, need to play the game, I, I don't know that lore. But yeah. yeah. So, you're going through this, uh, you know, quite interesting place, and... You know, it's really warm and really hot. It's very sunny, and, you know, you're pretty sure that you would be probably getting heat stroke if it wasn't for the canopy of, uh, you know, trees. Huh. You know, and as you guys are walking, you know, uh, Picky Pack, uh just suddenly stops and lifts one of her wings in front of you. I will stop and look around. Uh, she points at a spinnerick on a, on, on a tree next to you. And then she just like glares at the spinnerick, who after looking at both of you, just visibly sighs and leaves. I'm gonna look at pick a peck at that. She looks at you and says, ah. You know, you know how he is. D do I? Well, yeah, th these guys, they all, they're always causing trouble here on the island. Oh. Yeah, if, if you see a Spinarak and you're alone, uh, be ready for a fight, because they usually, they usually don't take fights that they think they cannot win. Oh, okay. Anyway, let's continue. I'll nod at that and follow. By the way, this event would have been different if you didn't have Pipika with you. Oh. Yes. But yeah. <laughs> Eventually, uh, you do uh, make it... Uh, you do actually make it to what appears to be... Uh, it kind of looks like a gate. And there's two stone totems, you know, they are basically sculptures. And they both look like a Pokemon called Zatu. Okay, I do know Zatu. Yeah. Someone has uh, sculpted these with pretty good detail, actually. Yep. Huh. Pipic, uh, Pipic Pack uh, then uh, looks at the gate, looks at you and says, Alright, just go, just go to the village and talk to the chief. Uh, I do have somewhere else I need to be. I'll give them a nod and head inside. Yep. Uh, as, as you go inside, she actually waves at you and says, All right, uh, good luck, treasure hunter. And then she I flies will, off. I will repeat the word treasure hunter under my breath confusedly. That's not what I expected. I thought she was going to be sending me to join some dungeon team. Yep. So, yeah, you, so you enter the village. As you enter the village, you can actually see that vast majority of Pokemon here actually, when they see you, smile and wave. I will smile back and return the waves. 
yeah, you can see all kinds of Pokemon. Uh, usually, you know, baby ones. You know, we are talking like uh, Pichus. You know, uh, you know, Snuffles. You know, that that sort of thing, right? Okay. And uh, they're all just kind of like running around and just like uh, tackling each other every now and then. You know, just doing the things that kids in this universe do. Uh huh. And. Uh, when you you know just kind of walk uh, through the village uh you can actually see somewhat of an old looking Kadabra uh who is currently in the process of uh, using a broom and getting dust out of her hut when she sees you she waves very very weakly you are definitely sure that this Kadabra is definitely in her late late years <laughs> fair you can see a Meowth currently in the process of uh, delivering what appears to be a bag full of uh, items. And uh, the Meowth is a strange color. You know, the Meowth is actually... Give me a second, I need to actually look at the color. Give me a moment. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, the Meowth is more gray than uh, whitish. Hmm. Well... Either way, I will give everyone a friendly wave as yeah. I pass. Yeah, it seems like you are, you know, everyone knows you here. Huh. Okay. But yeah. Uh, eventually, you do go to what appears to be the biggest hut in, uh, in the village. Probably the, the chief's hut. The hut, uh, by the way, looks, uh, well... It has uh, multicolored feathers on uh, on its uh, roof. Huh. Well, before I knock, I'd kind of just take a second to think. Yeah, uh, there is and... a sign in front of it, by the way. Oh. But it is written in a language you do not know. It looks like it's made out of like the language is made out of feet. Out of feet? Yeah, like out of like uh, Pokemon paws. Huh, so it's not unknown. No, not in this region. You see, Fair. Mystery Dungeon uh, is actually really cool, and uh, each continent has like their own languages and shit. Okay. So, yeah, here they, uh, they apparently write uh, in the form of. Uh, well, it's called the paw print language, basically. Well, I will see if I can figure out what it means. You have no idea. You don't know how to read this. <laughs> okay, I can't just logic it out by, you know, saying that looks like this and yada yada. Well, you are pretty sure that the, these several different feet don't actually say anything to you. <laughs> okay. Well, looking back at the door, I would take a second to think and just... I think pretty much, knowing what I know of Mystery Dungeon, I'm probably inhabiting someone else's body. And considering how well known this person is, I should probably do my best to portray myself as them so I don't cause issues. And then with a deep breath, I would give the door a knock. All right, you knock on the door, and uh, you definitely hear like something just fell. <laughs> like inside. Oh. And then uh, after a few seconds, you hear, oh, I'll be there in a moment. Oh, uh, alright, no rush. Yep. Uh, they are definitely not rushing as it takes them about a half a minute to reach the door. Then they open the door and you can actually see the Pokemon that is standing in the doorway. So it's basically this. I assume you know what this is. Yes. So you see a you see a very very dry and old looking slow king that is using a wooden staff in order to be able to walk. Uh -huh. Now you would know that slow kings can live hundreds of years. That means this slow king has probably lived hundreds of years. That means he probably 
like, remembers the times before humans started, like, showing up in the world. But yeah, uh, he looks at you, and then he gives you somewhat of a weak uh, smile as he, uh, you know, he, he puts most of his weight on the staff and he just says, Ah, the treasure hunter. I'm glad that you could re reach us. I'll give him a small nod and say, I'm glad I could make it too. So, are you have, have you thought over what I told you yesterday? Um, mostly. Do you want to talk about it again? Ah, yes, please. Come in. I will nod and walk in. Yep. Uh, the... His hut is rather spacious. It has several rooms, and... You can see that he has a lot of furniture, a lot of, like, things of uh, merit. You know, we are talking, like, lots of, like, little statues, masks... Uh, there's a, even like a strange multicolored vest made out of feathers, you know. There's a lot of paintings. It, 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 it's actually really nice. It's very well decorated. Yes. Uh, you can definitely see a, a table where you can uh, sit down. He actually has several different chairs, most likely for different types of Pokemon so that they can be comfortable. I will attempt to sit in the smallest chair I can find. Well, there is one specifically for your, your type of Pokemon. I will sit. But yeah, he very slowly uh, makes his way uh, to the fire in the middle of the room. And he puts down a little bit of uh, water. And he starts uh, cooking the water. And then he looks at you and says, uh, I don't remember. Do you drink tea? Oh, I love tea. All right, I will. Ma if, if it's all right, I will make you some tea. I will not say that would be amazing. Thank you. Yeah, you, you can see that uh, he actually makes tea in a very not our way. Like he literally puts the uh, he literally puts the herbs and the tea leaves into the water itself. Which you know, over here we just like we we put it in a cup and then we pour, right? Yeah. But yeah, as he's uh, preparing it and looking at the fire, he then says, I do I do hope that you will agree, uh, because the pirates have been causing us a lot of trouble. Well, why don't we go over it again, and I will make my decision. Hmm. Yes, um... So, as you know, uh, yesterday you've arrived, and we have, give, we have given out a call to find whatever is luring the pirates here. Now, we are not expecting you to take care of the pirates. They're too many and they're too strong, but you could potentially find what they are looking for and either give it to them or take it away. What is it that you think they could be looking for? No idea. I mean, the only thing of any value that's here is probably inside that hideout. Oh no! Oh. Aris? Hello? Oh, oh, oh. There, there we go. My computer froze. Oh, that's what happened, okay. Oh god. You just suddenly stopped at the only thing of... Yeah, it's because my computer literally froze. That's weird. Yeah, well, it's because this table is murdering my computer and I'm also streaming it, you know, it's a bad combo. That's fair. You know what, I am actually going to help this a little bit. Not much, just a little bit. God, I hope this didn't, like, corrupt the stream. Uh, whatever. So yeah, what was the last thing that you heard? Uh, so I asked about the... What he thinks might be in here, and he said, well, the only thing of any value... Okay, so, he said, Well, the only thing of any value would be, uh, what's inside uh, that hideout, probably. That I was telling you about yesterday. Oh, the one that I stayed in? 
No, no. The that one we gave you. No, what I'm talking about is the Haida that the two guild members had here before they died. Oh. Yes. Uh, there is a mystery dungeon. Uh, it's called a. Uh, I believe uh, they called it the Overgrown Cave. And um, the two guild, guild members, uh, they made a hideout in there. If the, if the pirates are looking for something, it has to be in there. I couldn't imagine anything else, really. Hmm. Are there any, like, old folk tales or stories about what could be in there? No. Not really. I mean, the dungeon is not even that dangerous, it's just... It's better not to go there. I'll give a small nod at that and say, well... Uh, have there been many responses to this, or am I the only one? You are the only one. Hmm. I mean, we are kind of far away from the town, after all. And on an okay. island. I will give a small nod at that. That is fair. It does seem a bit remote here. Hmm. Is there anyone in town who might be of any use or help? I mean, uh, Kadabra here is our healer, and if you get wounded, uh, she could treat you. And um, Mnyauf is taking care of uh, trading, though uh, we, don't ac we do not accept uh, okay cash here. I'll tilt my head at that. Uh, yes, we only trade. Money is useless this far away from any kind of town. That's perfectly fair. Hmm. So as of right now, my only option is to go in alone to try to find what they're looking for. Yes, I'm very sorry. And the hope is that that might stop the pirates. Yes, because they are obviously looking for something. But we do not know what, and like I said, there's not really anything here that's valuable. There has to be something that the two, uh, that the two, two guildmates uh, owned. Um, so, they died a long time ago. And when they died, they left behind their son. The son has been, uh, well, he definitely became a part of our village here, but uh, he always has that uh, guild energy in him, you know? Oh? Yes, uh, <laughs> actually, I didn't want to tell you this, really, it's not really your problem, but... He did vanish about two days ago, and last time he said that he's going to visit his uh, mom's and dad's grave. So you're thinking he may be in the dungeon and in trouble? Yes, but... Again, that is not your problem. We understand that you probably would not want to deal with that, and... I don't oh, know no, how... No, I don't I'm know how much... Help. Huh? Well, no, no. Uh, I'm here to help, so I'd be more than happy to look into it since I'm here to help you figure out your pirate situation anyway. Are you sure? I mean, if I can find him and if I can help him, why not? Alright, um... I he... will admit, I was hoping to have at least others join me because I'm not the most combative myself. I'm better at making others the best they can be than being aggressive myself. Well, 
I sadly cannot really help you. We are a small village, and uh, most of us are either too young or too old to help you. I'll give that a small nod. I could potentially persuade Pippi Kirk to help you. She is our sentry, after all. But if she's yeah. helping you, and if she, if something happens to her, then we will have no one to defend us. I will give a small nod at that and say, I definitely wouldn't want that. Hmm. Well, I will see what I can do. Alright, um... I will have Pippi Peck uh, show you where the dungeon is. I'll give a small nod and say, so just know I'm happy to do everything I can to give it a try and see what I can do, but I just hope you don't get your hopes too much on me. Well, being myself, I mean, by that, myself. I mean, to be honest, that's why we already paid you to do it. Uh, remind me of what it was that you paid me with. Uh, he points at your wrapped wrapped up leg. Okay, got it. Right, 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 right. Sorry. I had it wrapped up for... Like, because it's not a good idea to show something like this off. And I guess I completely forgot I was even wearing it. Yes. It was the only thing of value that I had here. I actually had it here as long as my grandpa. I believe he was... Uh, he was one of them explorers and he found it in a dungeon once, far away from here. It was the only thing I could have given you. I do not actually know what the value of it is, but it seems shiny, so it could be of use to you. I'll give him a nod and say, well, I appreciate it. It is... It's enough that I... Well, even without it, I'd be happy to help you, but I appreciate fair pay for fair work. All right. So I will do my absolute best to help. So we said, like I said, we sadly cannot help much more. No, no, no. It is fine. I mean, that is why you made the call, is it not? I just... I, I don't know how you town dwellers do things. Um... Well, you can say that I'm more than just a town dweller in particular. Yep. Uh, he finally is done with the tea, and he makes it. Uh, he makes it to the table. He gives you a cup of tea. He sits down very slowly, by the way, and he starts drinking his own cup of tea. I will definitely try to drink mine as well, but not as slowly. It is a little. I... It is a little bitter, by the way. <laughs> I would imagine, considering I don't think this world has cane sugar. Nope. It usually, uh, in this world, they, they usually sugar with honey. Oh. I kind of figured. I'm sorry. But, um, once that's all done, I will, uh, hop out of my seat and say, well, I guess, uh, no time like the present, right? He nods and, uh, gets up and he just says, I will, I will call for Pippi, Pippi Peg. I'll get a small nod and say, and I will see, do everything I can to help your village. Thank you. Of course. Yeah, very slowly he starts making his way for the door. I will follow. Yep. And I shall follow. All right. Outside of the door, uh, you can see that the village is just kind of living its life. And he just kind of lo looks up, his eyes light up uh, blue, and in a few moments, uh, Pippi Peck uh, arrives, lands in front of him, and just, Yes? What, what can I do for you, Chief? Uh, the treasure hunter has decided to actually help us. Ah, that's wonderful! Well, uh, do you want to be shown uh, how to get to the mystery dungeon? I would appreciate that. Yes. All right. Well, in that case, uh, tell me when you are ready, and I will 
uh, I will show you the way. Well, uh, like I told your wonderful chief here, no time like the present. Wow, let's go! I like it, says someone else with a little bit of energy. I'll give them a smile and pat off after them. Uh, by the way, she's a she. Or she. Her. I'll pat off after her. All right. So the journey to the mystery dungeon takes about uh, about an hour, right? It seems to be on the other side of the island, and the island is not actually very big. Okay. But event, but eventually you do actually uh, you do actually find uh, what appears to be somewhat of a normal looking cave, but it does have several signs in front of it, and it even has a totem of a very angry looking uh, Pidgeotto. Hmm. Yeah, Pippi Pig just, uh, you know, lands, looks at you and says, Yep, this is it. Uh, I hazard a guess that uh, there's probably Pidgeotos in there. Or Pidgeots. Nope. I mean, do you not know? Uh, not yet, no. I wasn't really given too much details. Other oh, than... no, no, no. Like, it's kind of strange that you don't know. Uh, she, she points her wing at the uh, totem of Pidgeotto. Pidgeotto is the uh, is the sign of danger. Ah, oh, right. How do you not know this? You, you, even little babies know this. Uh, call it regional differences. Oh, I thought. Oh, so you're not from the town. Oh, uh, I am not exactly from the town, no. But I, I was sent by the town. Well then, um, again, I don't know how your town thing works. Well, um... I kind of just look around. I guess I will see what I can find out about this bandit situation, and then I will report back to you guys. And hopefully I can help. Alright. Oh, uh, I'm gonna go back to the village. Um, good luck. I'll nod, give them a friendly smile, and then just look up at the dungeon. Yep, you can you can hear her fly away behind you. <sighs> no, this is just all deja vu. Your instinct is telling you that this is a potentially dangerous place. Oh, I definitely know. And this has all happened before. Yay, yet another mystery dungeon by myself. So, this time it's very real. Hmm. Alright, well... Obviously I was sent here for a reason, so... Hopefully I can handle myself in there. If that game was anything like this, I should be good at running away, I guess. Oh. And then with a deep breath, I will step inside. Alright. You step into the dungeon. And within the dungeon... Enter the first tile. Alright, uh, pull me the first tile. Alrighty. Alright, put it in the middle. There's like a... Oh, is it not locking? No. Yo, did I break it somehow? Yo, I, I think I broke it. Anyway, uh, position it in, in any way you want. Oh, I already had it positioned the way I wanted. Oh, okay. Like that. Alright. I'm gonna pick up your Eevee. So, you find yourself uh, within the mystery dungeon. You are now awfully aware of the fact that you don't have a guild seal. Yeah. That means there is no way for you to leave without an escape orb. Or finding a door, like or in... Or finding a game, door, huh? yeah. That well, means there is no way for you to leave ahead of the time. <laughs> I will put my faith in the fact that I was obviously transported here to do this because my knowledge could be of use here, or at least my 
skills or whatever. Somehow I can be of use here, so I'm going to put my faith in that and proceed. Weirdly enough, you uh, you didn't hear any voice. You didn't, like, get any instructions or anything. When you that arrived. Would, that would definitely be a bit odd, but at the same time I haven't really had too many mystery dungeon adventures to know that that would be required. Well, that that's usually a thing. Well, what, uh, so, what do? Uh, so, in this dungeon, uh, these, like, uh, black spaces between roads, uh, they represent rocks that you need to break. Ah, okay. Something I am very bad at breaking. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I will proceed diagonally up left. All right, pull out, pull out a tile. Uh, I'm not sure how this would fit to that. Oh, uh, can I? Yeah. Like this. Ah. Uh, oh. Okay, so that would be a jump. Okay, so you make your way over here. And uh, you can see that there is uh, a staircase in the distance, but you would have to jump over because there is a chasm. And what's the difficulty of the jump? Uh, give me a second. This one is two. Ah, and that's based off of dexterity, correct? Yes, it is. Give me a second. It is dexterity plus survival plus athletics. So I would have to pass two out of three dice, so probably a good idea to at least see if there's any safer options. I'm guessing it's just a straight fall, if I fail. Yes, if you fail, it is a straight fall, you will take damage, and you will have to try again. I will first take a look at what is down right before I do that. Also, since that was the second tile drawn, don't I no, roll the, a die? The, no, because the first one doesn't count. Oh, okay. And I'll proceed down left. Okay, so you go back here. That is a move. Also, blue. Actually, no. Next blue, no. All right. So what now? Down left. All right. Or down right. Then find a tile. Habowski. Markiplier, is that you? Yes. <laughs> All right. So, you make your way over here. First, we have the second tile. So I need you to roll me a d6. Oh, yeah. Four. Four. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. All right, uh, four. So, uh, as you make your way on, uh, on into this room, you actually find that in a corner of your eye, uh, there is a, uh, there is a weirdly blue and white uh, Pokemon uh, that seems to be hiding from you. Its eyes are light lighted up yellow when it's looking to, at you from the darkness. I will approach to about five feet, uh, like, away from it, and then sit and give it a, a, a little small wave and a friendly smile. All right. Um, hi there. I'm not here to hurt you. So, congratulations. I... You, found, <laughs> you, you found Shinx. Oh. A species known to be aggressive. Awesome. So, Shinx actually looks at you and, uh, still hiding from you, reveals a little bit of its face, uh, revealing that, um, so you cannot see it on the model, but, uh, the black parts of this Shinx are actually white. Oh, so like the outline around its ears and the back butt part? Yeah. And even okay. the even the yellow parts except for eyes are also white. Oh, it looks at you. He's shiny. It it looks at you and says, 
I don't know who you are. But I will defend myself. I'll shake my head and say, you would very much kick my butt. I'm I'm here to help, not to fight. Really? I'll nod. Oh, uh... I may be a little bit lost here. Oh? Yeah, I came here to uh, visit mom and dad. Oh, I was actually... You're, um... From the village, yeah? Yeah, I guess. Well, uh, you're... Loking actually wanted me to look into seeing what happened to you while you were in here. Uh, he rolls his eyes and of course he did. Well, that at least solves one mystery of, you know, this area. Well, um... Um, I assume you're from a guild? Could you just, like, uh, wiggle that f weird badge and just teleport us out? Well, unfortunately, the guilds were unable to catch wind of you. Call me just a concerned and helpful friend. Wait, you're kidding, right? I don't... I'll shake my head. No, 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 no. To... You don't understand. You, you, you have to be kidding, because... We, we cannot get out of here. That's not necessarily true. We can't get out easily would be more a more accurate response. Okay, I've been I've been stuck here for so long. Usually well, I just usually I just found mom and dad's place, but now the mystery dungeon just got me stuck here. I'll kind of just nod and say, yeah, mystery dungeons are known to change quite often. Yeah. Mom's, but, um, mom's and dad's uh, place is at the end of this dungeon. I have the key. But, but um, just don't give up hope. Because uh, as far as this goes in particular, the guilds don't really come out this far. Really? I mean, mom and dad were from a guild. I'll kind of nod and say, from what, it, from what the Slow King mentioned, it almost sounded like they were more so retiring here. I mean, they were really big, uh, they were big heroes. They were like, really big. They even have like a painting o o over where they sleep. Oh yeah. But even heroes have, have to retire at some point. I bet they didn't retire. I, I bet they just came here because they wanted to like, do something heroic here. You know what? That is very much a possibility. I can't say for sure. Uh, just call me a theorizer. All right. So but either way, the. So what are you actually? I'm an Eevee, but you can call me Ares. Oh, oh so you are from a guild. You're, you're just like mom and dad. I'm not from a guild, but I suppose you could say I'm like those from a guild. Oh, yeah. it's because uh, only uh, only Pokemon from a guild have like a weird name thing. Um, yeah, you can definitely say I am very much a oddity. Oh, so... Wanna stick together? I'll kind of give him a, a nod and say that was my hope, because I kind of want to help get you out of here and help ease your village's worries. So yes, absolutely. I would be uh, happy to help. He dismissively waves one of his uh, paws and just says, Ah! The, the village can go burn. I don't care. I mean, that's fair. But they are good people, so I don't know about them burning, but... They're boring. Yeah. They, they, they're they just happy to be in their little village. They, they don't want to look around. And when pirates showed up, they, they, just, they just hid in their huts and didn't do anything about them. Well, that is fair, a fair, like, assessment. That is exactly what happened. But, it's not for... You know, lack of adventure. I mean, most of them, as I'm sure you already know, are very old and not very combative. I mean, heck, look at me. I'm not very combative either. I'm more adventurous than anything. Wait, so wait, so why are you here? I thought you were here to stop the pirates. Well, there are more ways of stopping bad guys than just beating them up. No, no, no. You need to, like, punch them. Just it, 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 He just, like, with his pose, it just shows, like, a little, like, a punching motion. 
I just give him a small smirk and say, I mean, sometimes that does need to happen, but not always. Yeah, like, I, I've seen them. One of them is really big. Oh, what do they look like? Well, so, one of them kind of looks like a monkey. Hmm. You know, like, they're all over the place, you know, they're called Gruki. Okay. Yeah, uh, another one is, uh, well, he's always carrying around wood. Hmm. And another one is really big, and it's like, kind of looks like he has armor on, and he always carries around a sword. I'll give him a small nod and say, that does sound dangerous, but... Uh... And, and I have to tell you something, you know, I was not supposed to be there, but before I went here, I was there, you know, watching their ship, right? Uh-huh. And I saw something really, really cool happen. Oh? Yeah, so, you know that monkey? You know, Grookey? Uh-huh. You know, it seems like they got into a fight, and the really big one just poked his sword through the Grookey, and just kicked him down. Oh. Yeah, I mean, swords are very sharp and dangerous, so... Yeah. It sounds like, uh... Do you think the Grookey is dead? I am almost certain if they had a sword stuck through them that he is probably dead. Oh no no no! It's it's not stuck. You know he he pulled it out. I mean that. I mean the, the sword the sword looked really expensive. So you know you probably do not want to you know, keep it inside a monkey. No, but it's less about its maintaining its position inside. It's more so about it being inside you at all. If you get stabbed. That hole is going to stay there whether the sword stays or not, meaning you're going to die because your insides will soon become your outsides. I mean, it sounds kind of cool to get stabbed, though. No, you do not want to be stabbed. It is very agonizingly painful. It is the worst thing you can ever experience. Oh. So that Grookey is probably not in a good way. Not at all. Oh. Do you think we do you think we will be able to see his corpse? I've never well, seen a corpse before. I would advise probably avoiding it if you can, because it's I mean it's never pleasant to see a, a corpse. I mean I bet mom and dad saw a lot of corpses. And I can guarantee you not a single one of them they enjoyed seeing. Anyway, let's go find uh, let's go find where they where they are sleeping. I will give him a friendly smile and try to ignore his naivete. Yeah, he looks very young. <laughs> he lo he looks like like slightly older than those pichus that you saw in the village. Fair. And he's obviously a shiny. Uh, that is actually not what a shiny Shinx looks like. Oh. So he is an abnormal. Yep. Oh. Okay. Oh, speaking of which... We did forget that, rolling the D100 to see if I would play a shiny. Oh, okay. But we'll work on that later. No, actually, you can do it right now, you know. I mean, it's just a roll. Okay. Fair. And it's literally like 99 or 100, or is it just 100? Uh, it's actually a 1. A 1, okay. You need to roll 1. So, you know, just ch channel your phone, the quest nope. of your bad luck. 52, nope. Nope. Just figured we'd check. Anywho. Well, yeah, let's, let's see what we can find. Alright, let's go. If we find any bad guys, I'm really good at zapping them. And I bet I can make you even better at it. Huh? See, there's a reason that I showed up. I... You can call me an adventurous type, you know, kind of like those that come from a guild, guild, just not with a guild. But my specialty is in making others better at what they do, rather than being a fighter myself. Oh. Oh, so I kind of like Mum. Uh, sure. Yeah. 
My specialty is this. Uh, he, you can see his light up his tail as he's about to do electrical attack, and then he sends out what appears to be snowflakes out of his mouth. Oh. Huh. You know what? Um, do that again, and then as he does it the second time, I'm gonna helping hand him to show him how much better it can be with me here uh, and yep. helping. It will be a little better, actually. You see? Well, heck, you're right. I, I can channel my strength into you and make your strength even stronger. Well, that's really good. Well, let's go on an adventure. <laughs> let's do. Oh, uh, with that. by the way, I'm Shinx. It, it is very nice to meet you, Shinx. All right, you got a companion. Right. Okay, so now because you do I show have two people, I'm gonna put uh, both of you down here to represent the team. And I'm actually going to pull out uh, the party seal. I'm gonna make it a little smaller because it's bigger than the fucking tiles. And boom. Alright, where do you wanna go? In front of you, my friend, is a pit. I will peer down into it. You peer down into it and you can see, smell, and hear a lot of uh, what sounds like spiders, but it's dark. Mm -hmm. And how difficult it would it be to jump that? Just one. Just one, okay. Also, yeah, I just I'm... realized that Shinx is on this fucking picture. <laughs> Oh, yes, I... <laughs> yeah, Shinx is right I, here, just looking at you, I, judging you. I did know that much. Shinx literally in front of me, and I'm like, oh, hey, there he is. <laughs> but yeah. So you can roll me, and uh, you can find out if you can jump over it. Okay. I'm going to roll for Shinx. And I'm gonna helping hand him. Oh, oh shit! I need more die. Just <laughs> two more. And you said this is uh, dexterity and survival. It's uh, give me a second. It is dexterity plus survival plus athletics. Okay. Oh wow. Okay, that three passes. Uh, Shinx is five because of you. Oh, so we both rolled max, I'm guessing. Yes, actually. Yeah, with absolutely no issues, you, you, you jump over it. And I will take a look down this way. Alright, find a tile. Oh no. Oh, that's familiar. Yeah, except this time it's not a pit. Oh, right. So you see a very similar room, except now it's not a pit, it's a climb. A pretty a pretty difficult one, actually. It's, uh, it's climb three. Huh. Well. Uh, uh, how, what did, what difficulty is it that if I fail, I take damage? I'm guessing a three, it would be that. Well, it's based on like how much you fail. Okay. Yeah, like for every uh, fail, basically, if difficulty is three and you pass two, you you take one damage. I'm gonna look over at Shinx and say, "I'm not sure if I can climb that. I got tiny legs." Yeah, that's kind of really high up. Um, how good do you think you would be at breaking one of those boulders, pointing to the one to the left and right? I mean, I could try. Well, I will give you... I will lend you my strength. Alright, which one do you want me to break? Let's try the left one first. Alright. And I think you know what I'm gonna say. You're gonna... you're gonna helping hand him, correct? Yes. By the way, what's your strength? Two. 
Oh, so the same as him. Yes, but I can't helping hand myself. And he did it! And literally just because of your helping hand, because he passed two and he had four dice. Nice! Very good. Alright, he, he, yo, he just... He, he, he goes back, he runs towards the, the rocks and tackles them and manages to break them. I knew you were tough when I met you. Uh, he just like lives one of his paws and he's like, I'm okay. <laughs> and then I suppose I will give him a a friendly like a uh, pat of good job and then proceed up north. All right. It's time to find a tile. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh god, what is this mess? So, you find a room that has insane amount of paths in it. Huh. Well, this is interesting. Also, wouldn't this be a rolling tile? Not yet. The next one is rolling. Okay. Because, look. One, two. One, two. Actually, was I not counting? God damn it, I wasn't counting. You are right. <laughs> God, I fell off, man. <laughs> I, I need to focus. Oh, shit, oh. let's go. Excellent. Okay, let's go. roll me another one. Alrighty. Um, maybe I'm not gonna spend hours in a dungeon for once. Uh, one. Okay, give me a second. I need to find on which page it is. There we go. Okay, you said one? Yes. That is north. Now, roll again. Another one. Oh, it's one north. Okay, find a tile to the north. Oh, yeah. All right, this is the tile. No, this tile doesn't count for the tiles, and... Wait a second. Uh, I suppose to... Hang on. I'm gonna move this... Oh, no, it's gotta be north. Never mind. Then I guess uh, to... Make sure that there's room for that corner, for the corners, I'll do that. Yep, and the objective is here. Okay. Wow, this was, a, look... this was the fastest mystery dungeon I've ever seen in this poker roll. <laughs> look at it! Looking ahead, I will kind of just like point at that and say, does that look like the door? Yeah, yeah, that's the door. Let's go. And we proceed ahead. Wow, you didn't even get, get into any fights. Nothing. <laughs> you got no events. You just found Shinx immediately. And then you found the exit. Perfect. Wow. I am... <sighs> Sorry. I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, honestly. I was kind of hoping there would be more to it. Is there only one... Objective in here? Yeah. Huh. Okay. Because the other objective would be Shinx. Fair. And you already found him. <laughs> okay. Well Alright, so. Give me a moment. So. Ares. Yes. You and Shinx together reach uh, what, what appears to be... Very old, but very, very difficult uh, to destroy looking door. It seems like door that definitely was not made by someone uh, who is on the technological level of that village that you've been from. And look modern. Well, not like modern, but it definitely look, looks like rainforest and, you know, doesn't look like it, a hut. It looks like something that would take a forge to make. Like the, yes. the hinges and the reinforced metal um, uh, pieces, essentially. Yeah. And you can definitely see another thing. A thing that you are very familiar with. Which is, uh, you can see the symbol of the guild seal on the top of the door. Ah. Now there's a familiar sight. Uh, Shinx looks at says, what do you mean? Oh, um, 
The guild seal, pointing at it. Oh, so that's a good guild seal. Well, it's uh, a representation of a guild seal, but that's not a guild seal. That's yeah, what they look like. Yeah, I could never find guild seal in uh, my mom's and dad's uh, things. Maybe when they wake up, they will, they, will, they will give me a seal. In my head, just thinking, oh, you poor innocent soul. But yeah, uh, you can see Shings start to, you know, reaching into a little bag that he has. And he pulls out a key. Alright, uh, you, you just put it in here, he puts it into the lock, and he unlocks the door. I think we should probably get inside and close the door behind us quickly. We yeah. Don't be followed. Yeah. The, 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 I mean, to be honest, it, this was really like the moment you showed up. It was like very really easy and fast. I guess I just have that effect on lit things. But yeah, Shings just goes inside. And I will make sure the door is closed and locked behind us. All right. Especially knowing that there's armored and armored Pokemon with swords in here. But yeah, uh, you make your way inside what what appears to be like. Well, would you would imagine a James Bond villain uh, hideout to kind of look like if it was made in Pokemon? Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah, there's several rooms. You know, uh, you can see that there's all kinds of gear. You know, uh, on the wall. You can see that there is a big map that seems to to have been a uh, well, I want to say hand drawn, but probably not with a hand. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the side room, you can actually see Shings ignore all of this and just go to the side room. I kind of tilt my head at that and follow him along. And in the side room. You can see what can only be described as a shrine. And in the shrine is what could only be described as a grave. Oh no. And above the grave is a painting. Now, on this painting you can actually see two Pokemon. Uh, you can see... Uh, you can see an, a white Ninetales. And you can see a Luxray that are sitting next to each other, and they both have a blue flower right behind their ear. The Ninetales looks really happy, and she's holding a Luxray's paw with one of her paws. He is looking away from the painting and looks a little bashful. That would bring a smile to my face. Shings uh, just steps over the grave, by the way. He, he touches the stone part of the grave and just says, See? This is, this is where they sleep. Um, <clears throat> ah, hmm. Right, uh, sleep, yeah. Yep. Uh, he, points at the, he points at the painting. He points uh, at the, the white, uh, like ridiculously white uh, Ninetales and says, That's my mom. Her name was Rhyme. Uh, <clears throat> rhyme? Mm-hmm. Huh. And that right there is my dad. His name was Park. Park. Mm-hmm. Huh. They look awesome. They oh, look yeah. very happy. Yeah, they were really badass. Uh, well, I mean, I think they were badass. They were probably badass. I mean, they were from Guild, they were obviously badass. Huh. Yeah, he then points oh. he then points down and just says, and now they are sleeping here. Hmm. Hey, by the way, if you don't mind me asking, um how old are you? Me? On the odd. He just thinks for a moment and just is like, uh, I don't know, like two or three years. 
in my head I'll be thinking, oh, they do use years in this region. Yes. Two, three years, okay. Um, is is that equivalent to a two or three year old in real life, or is that like equivalent to like a 10, 13 year old in well, human year? Well, that's complicated because like, okay, so you know what's the canonical age of the EV in Explorers of Sky? Go on. Five. Oh. Like the ages, also, 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 also. Uh, you know what's the canonical age of Chatot in uh, Explorers of Sky? Go on. 31. Oh, jeez. So but, it varies from species to species. Yeah, it, it is it, it is basically like... Uh, Pokemon who like live less, they probably like gain adulthood much faster. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, you know, Caterpies and, you know, you know, a lot of bug types, you know, they probably do not live very long. But a species like a Shinx that evolves into powerful Pokemon like a Luxray would probably have a semi-longer life. Yes, uh, Luxray can live up to 200 years. Oh, so yeah, he pretty much is a literal baby. <laughs> Yeah, and Ninetales can live even longer, by the way. Like, Ninetales can live hundreds of years. They can get ancient as fuck. Jeez. Well, then knowing that he's pretty much a baby, I am going to spare him the news or the reality of the situation. And not tell him that his parents are not just sleeping. Yeah. And I'll say... No, oh, um... I will definitely be wishing they wake as soon as possible for you. Yeah, it's been taking so long. I cannot, I cannot wait to meet them. I never did. Well, one day we will all meet together. Oh, You're gonna be here when, when they wake up? Um, not specifically here, but... Yeah. But yeah, um, so you're probably much better at this whole thing. Uh, could you look for that uh, thing that uh, the pirates are looking for? Oh, yeah, that that's kind of what I was going to do. I just figured I'd come in and make sure you were okay. Ah, it's all right. I, I, I was okay. I was totally not scared and lost. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, you, you're, you're big and strong. And then I will give him a friendly smile, and then knowing that there's no dangers in here, I will pad out and attempt to find this mystery object. So, uh, you can definitely find some valuable items here, actually. Like, there's, like, orbs, there's, there's, you, you can see vans, uh, you can even see weapons. Uh oh Yeah, you can see, like, what appears to be, like, kind of like a hammer. Uh, you can see uh, what appears to be a couple swords that have been fitted to be wielded by a tail. Huh. You also find yeah. like a lot of like sentimental value items, you know, like for instance, there's a lot of teeth and such, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of like, you know, skins and furs. Uh, you, you can see that in one of the rooms, they, on the wall, they literally have, like, an entire skeleton of, uh, Sharpedo. Huh. I'm not sure what a Sharpedo is. It's a, it's a shark. Oh. It's a very big shark. It's, like, probably ten times the size of you, <laughs> of you right now. Hmm. But yeah, uh, you can see all kinds of like books everywhere, you know, papers, you know, like lots of text. I will actually take one of the books and look at it. It is written in paw print. Now, of course it is. And here I was hoping that they might have been humans. Nope. 
Hmm. Well, I will put it back down and continue looking through things. Yeah. Eventually, you do actually uh, find what appears to be a chest. Oh. Yeah, it is a blue chest. Is this one of those ones that doesn't have a visible lock? Well, this is one of the ones that you do need uh, either a special method or, or two in order to unlock them. Hmm. Well, I will definitely keep note of that. But for now, I'm going to make sure I look through everything so, first. Oof. So eventually, you do actually find something interesting. Oh. So you find another chest that is actually open. And inside, you find what you can only guess was uh, the previous inhabitant's adventure gear. Oh. Yeah, you can see okay. you can see chests, you can see the guild seals, and uh, you can see, among many things, a wonder map. Ah, now that there is useful, but... Probably not what the bandits are after. Because if they were to come out here all this way, it would have to be for something of incredible value. Considering they didn't go after the Amerib race, it's probably something with more than monetary value. So I will actually tuck that uh, wonder map away, but I will continue like looking around. I do have to mention that in that chest there are backpacks. Oh, okay. I was assuming like from the previous uh, game when we were, when we found the bodies of that long dead diamond adventure, and you mentioned that we weren't able to use the bags. I assumed that I wouldn't be able to use these ones. No, that's a regional thing. Oh, that's a regional thing. Okay. Well, then in that case, yeah, seeing the bags, I would try to see if I could wear one. Yeah, uh, so one of them is definitely a little too big for you. Probably the Lux Rays. Yeah. Because Lux Ray is fucking huge. But uh, the Ninetales one, um, you know, it is still a little too big, but it fits. You know, you just have to, like, wrap it around your belly instead of uh, around your back. Yeah, and make sure the straps are cinched up as tight as they can possibly go. Yeah. But yeah, congratulations. You you have a backpack. And I'm guessing it's tattered. Yeah. Weirdly enough, when you uh when you like uh when you pulled it out, it looked pristine and beautiful. But the moment you like put it on, it's almost like it got smaller and you know, probably some weird magic. Well, I mean, that makes sense from what I know about Mystery Dungeon. There's no getting around the earning your way. So, with that in mind, I would continue rummaging through things. Yeah. So you do find uh, you do find old uh, old berries and apples that are not very edible anymore. <laughs> um, That's fair. Like I said, you do generally find things that are only useful to someone who's seeking knowledge. There's also still that chest that you, you know, don't really have a way to open right now. Well, now that I actually have a way to carry more than one item, I will take the chest. Okay, give me a moment. Okay, here's the chest. Boop. Alright. And you said there's two sets of armor too, right? Yeah, there are two sets of armor, but none of them fit you. Not for wearing. I mean, I you, you can definitely take them. Because, I mean, two suits of armor, whether, you know, whoever I would appraise them with would could wear them or not, would still be valuable. Okay. So, uh, one of the suits of armor has what appears to be lightning bolts on it. The other set of armor has what appears to be snowflakes on it. 
Oh, well, that makes sense. Like, uh, electric type and snow, uh, ice type. Yeah, um, you can also tell that one of these is much heavier than the other. Now, weight, thankfully, is not a mechanic, but uh, one of them is definitely much heavier than the other. Hmm. Okay. So give me a second. I'll just tuck them away in the bag for the time being. Uh, I am not going to be making that thingy for it yet. I'm going to do it, uh, you know, between sessions. But That's fine. here you go. Two pieces of armor. Look at them. They're so big. <laughs> yes. Sorry. And with those tucked away, I will continue looking through things and hopefully find something that has less of a monetary value and more of a, oh shit, this could be what they're looking for, value. Well, eventually you are done looking around and you don't really find anything that screams useful or powerful or, you know, expensive or anything like that. Hmm. It's actually a little frustrating. Also, eventually, yeah. Shinx is done with what he's doing in the other room, and he pokes his head uh, into the main room, looking at you, and says, So, have you found it? Uh, not yet, but I do have one last idea of where it might be. Oh. Uh, but while I'm, while I'm looking there, do you think you could do me a favor? I mean, yeah, probably. Uh, do you want to come over here, pointing uh, towards the pile of, like, wands and orbs and whatnot, and say, look through those real quick and tell me if there's anything that uh, looks particularly valuable in that? Even I mean, though I already know there's not, but... I mean, I don't really know what's valuable, though. Uh, something that makes you feel like it's just radiating power. Okay. Uh, he just, like, goes to the pile. And as he's doing that, I'm going to head into the room because I just didn't want him to have to see me open the sarcophagus because he's baby. Yeah, so yeah, you're, you're in the other room. Well, I... Use, is this like a, a big stone sarcophagus or is it like... Uh, how, it, how? It, it is, so it has like a stone uh, head thing, right? But uh, the thing itself, the, you know... I don't want to say coffin, but it kind of looks like a coffin. It's actually made out of wood. Oh, okay. Well, with a quick breath, because I don't want him to walk in on this and him to see his dead parents and then break his little heart, I'm going to quickly open it and, and peek inside. So you open it, and you probably expected skeletons or something like that. But what you see there is, as if frozen in time, Perfectly preserved two bodies, currently just stuck in an embrace. I definitely wouldn't have expected skeletons yet, since, I mean, he's been alive for three years, and I highly doubt they died on his day of birth, so... It couldn't have been long enough for the bodies to decompose that much, yeah, but... Yeah, but they look perfectly preserved. As mm. if the time just stopped. You can see them just, like, hugging and just... You can see them both with a smile. With a soft sigh, I kind of just say, it's like mutter under my breath. Wish, hope one day I can be that happy. But yeah, uh, between them, you can actually find an item, though. Oh, there. I will take, uh, I will uh, examine, that's the word. Examine that more All right, give clearly. So, the item that you find between them is uh, something that looks like a very overcomplicated key. So, you know how keys usually have just like, you know, one thing that goes into a lock? Uh huh. This one has several. And it's like along the entire length of the key. Now this definitely has no monetary value, but m no monetary value, but oh, actually, I'm an idiot. You know exactly what this is. Oh, 
It is the chest cracker. Oh. Another chest cracker. Okay. Yes. Oh, so then it's not like a a mystery key to some mystery room, treasure, whatever. Nope. So it's just a chest cracker, okay. It is a chest cracker. Something that I literally could have brought with me if I wanted. Yup. Because you can hold one item. Yeah. Well, I'll kind of shrug and say, well, that's not quite what I was expecting, but hey, at least it'll give me a chance to take a look at if whatever I'm looking for is in that chest. There's nothing else in there other than the chest cracker and the bodies. Yeah, they do have flowers and such in there, you know. Uh, whoever put them there really cared about them, by the way. Because obviously they didn't put themselves there. Yeah, that's fair. And it definitely well, wasn't anyone from the from the village because you know that they do not want to go here because mystery dungeon. Almost makes me wonder if the Shinx may have brought them here not knowing that they were dead, thinking that they'll just wake up. Oh, well, we could ask him. But then again, that seems very unlikely given his age. Yeah, like he would be like less than one year when this happened. There. Well, I will reclose the sarcophagus once I realize there's nothing else in there. And I'd probably just pull out that chest and start opening it to see if it holds what we're looking for. So, you put the key inside the chest. And as you... you basically, like, hear a click, and then you put it further in, and you hear a click. You can tell that this dialog is very overcomplicated. And then eventually, when you hear the final click, the chest cracker breaks. Oh. And the chest opens. Did not expect that to break. Well, I guess that means that uh, it's a good thing uh, I do have another chest cracker. Yeah. So, you open the chest. Do you look inside? I look inside. When you look inside, it is very strange because the only thing that's in it is actually a jar. And inside a jar is a single eye that seems to be looking at you. Well, that's not disconcerting at all. It, it is. It is a. It is a eye that is shaped like a letter, and it's black. It's an unknown. Immediately upon seeing you, uh, you can see it uh, hitting the glass of the jar. Uh, you can see next to the jar that there is a piece of paper. What does the paper say? Uh, you don't know because it's written in paw print. Of course it is. Well, now that the sarcophagus is closed, I suppose I can always uh, call Shinx in. Hey, uh, hey, Shinx, can you come help me for a second? Uh, you hear the noises of things like falling? And then, oh, no. he, and then he like rushes towards you. Yeah. I I found I managed to open a chest here and. Uh, oh really? I ne I never found out how to open that one. I. Uh, let's just say I I have a lot of knowledge about chests. I guess, even though I don't really, but I don't want to exactly explain chest crackers because even I still don't fully understand them. So. I just say I have a... I'm good at chest. Oh, all right. And puzzles. But um, anyway, there, uh, so I'm weird. I'm from another place. I don't know your written language. Could you read this? Oh, it should be easy. Can I see it? I will hand him the paper. Yep. Or I, I guess paw him the paper. Yep. He, he, he looks over the paper and says, uh, Under no circumstances, open this chest... If you open this chest, immediately seal it. Uh, if the unknown within sees you, deliver it to Treasure Town as soon as possible. Hmm. Uh, he just looks at you and says, what, what's Treasure Town? 
Uh, well, obviously a place. What's unknown? Uh, it's a type of extremely rare and mysterious Pokemon. Oh. In fact, they are actually what a lot of uh, other continents' languages were based on. Okay, okay. So... Oh, by the way, uh, I found this. And uh, he whips out the orb. I will look at the orb closely. It is an escape orb. Huh. Very good. That will help us get out of here, actually. And as you said, you suddenly hear a knock on the door. The outside door? Yep. Oh boy. And it, so it sounded like uh, the knock was done by something made out of metal. Oh, double boy. I'm gonna take that paper uh, back. By the, uh, uh, by the way, Shings immediately just turns towards and says, Give me a moment! Uh, I don't think that's a good idea, Shings. Huh? Keep that door locked. Oh. And okay. as soon as I say that, I put the paper in the chest and I re-lock and re-close and lock it. Uh, you cannot because the key is broken. Oh, I thought it just upon closing locks. Nope. Well, then I'll just uh, close the chest and then try to bind it with, like, if there's any rope or... Nope. Something like that. Oh. And then I will just close it, but obviously not. I'm not able to walk it. Yep. And uh, as you look at the door, you just hear the knock again. This time louder. And from the chest, you can hear the voice in your head saying... Release me! Release me or they will get ya! And they will get me too! Um... I'm gonna take that, uh, escape orb, and then... With one last look around, I would probably want to at least see if there's any useful looking wands. Like, what wands are here? Well, uh, hold that thought, because this is where we end the session. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, what did you think? I am just as excited as ever. I love Mystery Dungeon. Right, I love all the sessions. Remember to take a photo of your character sheets in case something gets uh, deleted. I'm gonna put Shinx next to you you on the on the thing. Okay. Someone's knocking. Someone's knocking. He sounds angry. <laughs> All right, I'm going to clean, uh, gonna clean up a little bit here, so that other people can use this uh, table. Once you are done, tell me. Uh, I will save the table, and we shall continue. And by continue, I mean stop. <laughs> Literally, the uh, the opposite of continue. And you mean we will continue later when we have everyone? Yes. Okay. Uh, what is the name of this adventure one more time? It is, uh, it is uh, Sunstruck Renewal. Okay. Go ahead and put that in my, as my note name and notes saved. Okay. All right, so I have DJ's uh, session written, and next I'm going to be writing uh, Frax, and uh, I'm waiting for Ember to send me his character stuff so that I can write his. Okay. But yeah, I and hope also, you... I don't know if you noticed in the background, but I realized I didn't roll for uh, gender. Uh, it's because we now give, we now have like a feature if you want to play a different gender, you know, we have a feature for it now. So, oh. yeah, you can play a human that is not you, and when you play a human that is not you, congratulations, you can be female. Oh, okay, so 
But being a human, it would still be random chance. Nope, it's no longer random chance. The only time it is actually random chance is uh, if you are making like a Pokemon Pokemon, right? And that's where... Th honestly, I'm not even gonna make it be a random chance. I'm just gonna tell you it just be big. Okay. Well, I was mostly just rolling because I kind of do want to... Like, for the sake of roleplay... I want this character to be female because I feel like it would be something that would cause a lot of drama to me personally being in a female body. Well, you probably should would be fun. You probably you probably should have said that before we did the intro. <laughs> well, I mean, would it have changed that much? Yes. Ah, uh, okay, I didn't realize gender played any sort of role in this. A little bit. I mean, I guess uh, what I was guessing was that it would only play, you know, how people, I guess, pronoun me. Uh, no, 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 there's actually, like, much more. Even in the games themselves, the gender is super important. Like, for instance, in Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky, right? If you have a uh, Pokemon, you know, if you and your partner are the same gender, you literally cannot be in a romantic relationship. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of changes to genders and natures and personalities and, you know, hidden friendship points and such. Well, based off of uh, Star Raptor and Sylveon, I'm guessing you don't play it by that rule. Well, no, more like. Uh, <laughs> so in Mystery Dungeon Society, uh, being gay is seen as abnormal, it's part of the whole abnormal thing. That's why uh, Sylveon. Uh, that's why uh, Sylvian and Staraptor have been basically most of their life hiding their relationship. Until they made yeah. their own guild, where the, suddenly they can be a little bit more open. And yet they are still trying to hide it a little bit. That is fair. You know, like, uh, in Mystery Dungeon World, you know, you have to understand that, like, this is kind of like... Before Medieval Times era? Right, and because of that, these kind of like things are kind of frowned upon. Because if you are in a relationship without the uh, capability of making eggs, then why are you in a relationship? I guess, I mean, some would see it that way, yeah. Yeah. I could see. How now, obviously, the Raptor and, uh, you know, Sylvian would tell you something else because they have an entirely different opinion about that. <laughs> <laughs> As anyone that's. Not to mention, their's, their relationship is extra strange because they are also in a relationship outside of Egg Group, which is double negative there. <laughs> that's fair. Not to mention they're entirely different species, you know, like, by that I mean, like, one is a bird and the other is a mammal. Yes, one's a flying type and the other is a fairy type. Well, not even typing, you know, like, I'm, I'm literally just talking about entirely different, you know, type of animal. That's also fair, yeah. You know, like, one has to think about how did they even get here. <laughs> yeah, I gotcha. Like, that's probably a story and a half. So I'm guessing this, uh, the characters probably would have treated me a lot different if I was female then. Yes. Especially, uh, especially characters of your species. Because, you see, when, <laughs> when you go to uh, Celebi... Give me a second, I need to open my browser again. Also, I'm going to end the stream, so bye-bye everyone. Bye guys!